The subject of the teaching today was about three main factors for progress in Dhamma. So the three main qualities or things that will make somebody continue to progress and that they will not fall back. And these three things will be firstly that one's crystal palace has fallen. So the element of renunciation being fed up. Secondly, strong faith based on seeing for yourself. And thirdly, being absorbed in watching one's mind and studying it constantly. So the first point about the crystal palace being collapsed, what does this mean? To understand this point, what we have to realize is that the lives of everybody, of all people, are made of running after crystal palaces, building a hope, building a dream, having some aspiration, some desire that constantly we're running after, following, whether that's desire of money, desire of love, desire of fame, it can be anything, desire of political success, desire to change the world. Whatever is our dream, whatever is our hope, whatever is our desire, it's this that keeps us running and this that ultimately keeps us suffering. The one whose crystal palace has collapsed, what this means is that his hope of happiness by achieving what he wants, by uh, attaining his desire... This has fallen down because either by experience he has had some tragedy in his life or he has seen by himself that whatever he tries to achieve ultimately falls down, ultimately falls apart. That there is no hope of a secure and solid permanent happiness in the achieving of some material desire. So either this is by experience or it is just by wisdom. Either way, actually, the wisdom is the quality that makes one realize this properly. Because if you don't have wisdom, even people go through so many tragedies in their life, they just continue to look for a different desire or a different version of the thing that they wanted. So the one who is wise will realize that this is a bit like children building sandcastles over and over again in the sand by the seaside, only to have them crushed every time by the sea. And every time they become so upset and so sad, so desperate with the wicked sea that came and crushed their sandcastle or with somebody who knocked them down. But they don't realize that it's just because they were building out of the wrong material. They built out of sand. The thing is sand. It has to collapse. So in the same way, the one who has the wisdom to realize that whatever he constructed, whatever he built... Its nature is to fall apart. Its nature is to collapse. And the the key that people who have really experienced a great suffering based on this is that they can realize or they can see that whatever happiness they got from the delight of having their crystal palace was really not worth the pain and suffering of losing it. And they don't want to go through the same thing again. So they become fed up. But it doesn't mean that we have to go through this physically experience loss and suffering in order to come to the same understanding. We just need some wisdom. Basically, the effect of this element of being fed up or having the hopes and dreams of happiness in the material world collapse, it just means that there is no plan B. This is the main thing. There is no option of returning to another dream or another way of life. There is no other pathway possible for the one who has this element very strongly, then to progress in Dhamma. That's his only refuge. That's his only path. The second point is faith. And faith, we do not mean blind faith. Faith as in just believing without any reason or without any base. The strong faith that gives rise to practice in Dhamma is based on seeing for oneself the truth of what is told and what is taught. So it means that you have seen something yourself that gives you the faith to practice in order to see the rest. So the example that we like to give for this is that it's like you're going to a city and you've never been to this city before, let's say it's Montreal, and now somebody gives you directions in the beginning of how to get there, and as you start to follow the directions, you don't know if they're the right directions or not. 
But as you progress along the road, now you see signposts for Montreal. And the more signposts you see, the more faith you have or the less doubt you have that this is really the correct way to Montreal and that Montreal is really there at the end. So it's like that. By seeing something for yourself that makes the Dhamma become more than just theory that is told to you by somebody else, then you have very strong faith to continue to practice. And these two points together, uh, the fed up, having lost hope in constructing crystal palaces and the point of faith, together these make for an extremely clear aim that one is no longer interested in pursuing something else and one is also very determined for this aim of of finishing, of getting to the end goal of the teaching of the Buddha out of faith that it is possible that we have already come thus far that we can do the rest as well. And so this leads me to the third point, which is essentially having the practice of the observation of the mind and the work of looking inside to correct oneself and to remove all impurity as one's only real interest and one's almost obsession, I want to say, although it's not an obsession of passion and emotion, but just that it's so much absorbing your attention that the attention is there going back to that constantly. The example for this is a chicken who is sitting on her eggs. I don't know if you've ever seen a chicken sitting on her eggs waiting for them to hatch, but we have chickens here and we can see how they behave. And as soon as they decide that they are sitting on their eggs and they're going to hatch some chickens, now it becomes almost impossible to deter them from this aim. Like you try to, for example, if you don't want them to sit on the eggs, you have to try and remove them from their eggs and put them in a different place and get them out of their mood. But they will resist you every step of the way. And they just sit there, refusing to be interested in going to search for worms, refusing to be interested in going to look around the garden, not interested in going out, not interested in going to play with the other chickens, not interested in going to eat or drink. They will go to eat and drink, but they rush back to their eggs as soon as possible. All this without even knowing how long it's going to take for the eggs to hatch. They really don't know. So the meditator who is working well in Daman, who is progressing fast based on having these other two factors of being fed up and having faith, he will work in this way. He will be like the chicken on his eggs. Except instead of eggs, now... His subject is his mind. So as the chicken has to keep her eggs warm, he has to keep his mind under observation. What's going on in the mind? To be constantly aware of it. Instead of getting caught up in outside subjects, he comes back to his mind and watches there, is interested in that, not interested in what's going on, what the conversation is or what the job is. Or He can be in conversation, he can be in jobs, but he always comes back to look inside instead of being busy outside. And any opportunity he gets, he will turn his mind inside, turn it to Dhamma. As soon as he has to go to the bathroom, he will watch every step of the way how the mind is giving the order for the foot to move. As soon as he goes in the shower, he doesn't lose his attention if he's in the shower or if he's in another subject. He keeps it all the time, just like the chicken on her eggs. Has to keep them warm all the time. So with this constant attention and this constant effort, it's natural that one progresses fast. Wherever you put attention, there is development and there is growth. The more attention you put inside on your mind to correct, the more there is correction and the more there is development of wisdom. So just to summarize briefly, again, the three factors. The first is the loss of hope in building sandcastles that will only collapse. Second, faith based on seeing for yourself that the practice allows you to see things that are true and that what the Buddha says is true at a certain level, therefore the rest of it is possible too and the rest of it is also true. And thirdly, being like the chicken, fully absorbed with warming her eggs, 
the meditator must be fully absorbed in watching over his mind. <laughs>